Hi there friends, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Pear Blossom Press video. Today we are going to be making a halo light card. So let's talk about what we're using. Obviously we're using the halo light. I love this halo light combo set because it's a six pack. It comes with two halo lights and four one lights. Wow, I love that you get six lights in this set. So that makes six different cards you can make with this one kit. Love it. And then th I need to make a baby card. So I'm going to be using this Little Gnome Nappers from Trinity Stamps. And I'm also going to pair that up with this Porta Hello stamp set for our background. I do have the matching dies for both of these, but we are only going to be using the dies for the Little Gnome Nappers. Um, yeah have to make a baby card my daughter is having a baby and then we've got our simply sentimental baby stamp set along with the matching dies for that as well so let's get started on our background i'm going to bring in just a piece of craft card stock that i have i did trim this down to be four inches by five and a quarter and so i'm going to put this into my misty with our Porta Hello stamp set. I just love this one. This stamp set's just a great stamp set anyway, but it's also, it works really well for this background that I'm making because you don't have to color it in if you don't want to, and it, it'll it just go ahead and finish up your background, which is great. So I've got that in there. I'm gonna ink that up with some Juicy Embossing Ink by Ink on 3 after I use my anti-static powder tool on my background. We'll ink that up. I do have to ink it up a couple different times this is a very detailed stamp. It's a lot of fun to color too, but it, it makes some good backgrounds also. So I've got that stamped out and then we're going to move it to the left-hand side a little bit because I want that to really cover that background and I'm just kind of playing around with how far in that's gonna be. And then once again, ink that up with our Juicy Embossing Ink. Because it is a wet um, embossing ink it'll stay damp for a little while and so I don't have to rush too much to get the embossing powder on there this is by ink on three as well it's called strawberry champagne it's a beautiful like dusty rose color so I'm gonna hit that with my heat tool and it's really gonna pop on that craft cardstock now the reason I chose these colors is because this these are the colors that my daughter has for the nursery if you guessed she's having a girl and so her baby shower is next month. And so I obviously had to make a very special light up card for her. So this is where this all comes in. So we have a die. This is by My Favorite Things. It is a two inch circle. So any two inch circle would work, but this is the one I'm using. And then I'm gonna bring out that kit or you know you've got six lights in there and I'll just easily break those apart. You'll pull out those one lights out of the center and then I'll just kind of break off the extra pieces and we can just throw those away. We don't need those anymore. And so now I still have five lights in this set. One more halo and four one lights. I love the halos for so many reasons, but they are so good for spotlighting an image. And this just came to my mind that I really, really wanted the little gnome napper to be spotlit on top of this card. So I'm just making sure where that circle die is gonna go. I'll tack that down with a little bit of mint tape and then we'll eventually run that through our die cutting machine. But now I'm gonna put the battery in our halo. <laughs> Super simple, just make sure your plus side is up and you're good to go. All right, and then the background that I have or this you know, base, card base that I have, I just had that in my stash. It was already scalloped. Talk about perfect for a baby card, right? So don't know where it came from, but I've clearly had it for a while and I love it when I can use things up that have been in my stash. So I did mark with a pencil where the circle is. I can erase those pencil lines later, but I just wanna make sure everything is lined up before I stick down my halo. I'm gonna use liquid glue because I want that to be able to wiggle around just a little bit. I'm not sure, you know, I mean, I am sure where it needs to go, but just in case I don't put it down exactly where I want it to go with the the liquid glue will give me a little bit of wiggle room. So now I can erase those little pencil lines and you'll, you never knew, right? All right, just marking now where our little push button is gonna go. So I just mark it with a dot with my pencil. And then I'm gonna bring in the little stamp set by Pear Blossom Press. This is perfect for all of your interactive cards. It's got that push here and you also have the little light bulb for the back of the card. I love putting that on the back of all of my light up cards. So I'll put press here. 
It's nice and subtle, but the recipient will know where to press. And then I can ink up my light bulb that says handmade for you. And then I'll grab in my name stamp and I'll stamp that underneath as well. Because why not, right? So now the back of my card is all set. I went ahead and stamped out this little gnome napper onto some Express It cardstock using ink on threes, blackout ink. I should have heat set it. Uh, you do want to do that with this particular ink because it can stay wet for a little bit and then if you're using your alcohol markers over the top of it, it can kind of drag that color. It ends up being fine, but if I had been thinking, I would have heat set it just to make sure that that color wasn't going to move. But otherwise, that ink and this combination of paper are perfect for alcohol markers. And as you can see, I kind of go between my Olo markers and my Copic markers. They all work great together. Uh, any alcohol markers that you have, or if you're interested in looking into alcohol markers, uh, my favorite are the Olos and then the Copics come next, but I really just enjoy the juiciness of those Olos. And there is a learning curve with all the markers. <laughs> I mean, that's at least my experience. So don't get frustrated. I mean, you can get frustrated, I suppose, but just know that it's something you have to practice with, just like anything, any new medium. If you want to get good at it, you have to practice. So this is what I'm doing. And I'm putting all those colors up on the screen, as you can see. Um, so we've got our little dusty rose color, and then there's also that like mustardy yellow color. Uh, I think that's pretty popular these days for the baby girls. And so we're doing that. And I'm just really excited. Uh, first time grandma here. So very, very excited for this little baby to get here. And now I'm going to go ahead and speed up, not double time, but quadruple time, because all of those mushrooms are going to be the same. I wanted those to be a little bit more subdued in the background, which is why I'm choosing more of a craft color for those mushrooms. And then... I'm just using this little E53 for the mushroom stems. And then we'll bring in a couple more of those Olos for the grass. All very subdued colors because I wanted the focus to be on our sweet little baby. I'll bring in the matching die and then we can die cut her out. Run that through my die cutting machine. And now I need my sentiments. So I'm going to bring in that Simply Sentimental baby stamp set. And I'm deciding which baby I want and kind of how which one's going to look best on there. I decide I want this one. So I'll die cut that out of that same craft cardstock. And then for our shadow, it'll be white. And then I can just use my reverse tweezers along with a little bit of liquid glue to adhere all those down to that shadow piece. I didn't want it to stand out so much because originally I was thinking black for the word baby, but then I thought that would pop more than the baby itself. And I really didn't want that on that subtle background. But play around, you know, if I had die cut it out of black, I could always use that on a different card. It's not like it's, you know, no harm, no foul. You've just got another one ready to go for the next card. And sometimes then it just makes things that much faster, right? All right, so then we'll finally get all that adhered down. And then I'm going to decide on which sentiment I want to go above that. And I'm going to put your having a, since this is for her baby shower. You're having a baby. And then I just trim that down using my guillotine trimmer. But now I want to attach down my panel to my base. So I've got some of that world's best foam tape. And you're going to see exactly why, for a couple reasons why I absolutely love this foam tape. One reason is the release paper comes off super, super simple. If you're one who likes to have manicures, which I do my own, but if you like to have your nails painted, I have had some of those tapes, those foam tapes, rip the manicure right off my nails if you're trying to pick underneath. And so that's kind of a big deal for me. I don't want to have to redo my nails all the time. So um, yeah, I love it for that. Not only that, you're going to see it here as well. It is repositionable for about 30 minutes. So I'm peeling off all that release paper. <laughs> it's coming off crazy easy. And then I'm going to take my panel and I'm going to put it on there. And I thought I had it fairly centered on there, but I don't. So I'm going to peel that away. And it doesn't rip my paper. In fact, I can just put that piece right back where it was. And then I can try again. So that alone makes this just completely worth it to me. Because I don't want to have to redo that background. Or I didn't want to. And I've had to do that before. Where you're like, well, that's destroyed. So you have to completely redo your entire background. And nobody wants to do that if you don't have to. 
So I'm going to put another piece of that down in the center and I did put a little bit of glue on some of those ends that overlap, but we're good. And this is why that halo light is just fabulous to me. I really want that little baby to be highlighted. And so when you spotlight like that, you know, with a halo light, it's perfect. It just makes me so happy to see that cute little baby have that light behind her and spotlight it all up. Do want to embellish. So I'm bringing in these embellishments. They're called the Gold Rush embellishments and they're from Trinity Stamps. And so I'm just going to be fairly liberal putting those all around using my pickup stick. You can get that pickup stick from Pear Blossom Press. It's in the store as well. And it's a fabulous tool. I use it pretty much for every card I make, whether it's the pick tool or the little um, wax part. I use it all the time. I'm going to bring in that little stamp set one more time and we're going to ink that up with some Tattered Rose Distress Oxide ink because I want that to be on the inside of our card as well. And the Distress Oxides are perfect for stamping as well. So now she's on the inside also. Brought that inside out, or outside inside. So take a look at how cute this card turned out. Oh, I cannot wait to give it to my daughter. I think she's going to love it. So if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And be sure to check out all that Pear Blossom Press has going on over on their blog, Facebook page, and Instagram for more crafty inspiration. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you soon.